Hi guys, welcome to my home. I was going to go fishing this morning, but the wind, the rain was absolutely horrendous. So I didn't want to go and sit in that. It's not nice fishing in it. It's impossible to film in torrential rain and high winds and it just wouldn't be very nice. So just wanted to have a little chat with you about all the preparation that goes on at, at home or behind the scenes. So, gonna go down to looking after your reels, uh, making the dongles, looking after your rods, all the tools that I keep with me every time I go fishing. I always keep them in the box and I take those bits everywhere with me. No matter whether it's clean ground, rough ground, or what fishing, it's always with me. So, yeah, let's get into it. Right, first off, making your dongles. So, here I've got in black. 300 pound braid which is one millimeter diameter so to start off you're going to make a loop with your braid leaving a nice tag end and if you pinch it between your index finger and your thumb wrap it around making another little loop with the main loop push it through the loop that you've just made and pull it down but at the moment you don't want to pull it too tight so you can adjust it so I mainly use imps by breakaway so you want it to fit over the plastic part of the imp but it needs to be big enough for it to freely come off so as you can see there I've made a little loop you got your tag end and the main part. So, little puller. It's nice and smooth. It's not going to cut into the braid. Put it through the loop. Wrap it around your hands a couple of times. And just pull it as hard as you can. So we've made the loop for the dongle. The pair of these cedra bases is they're super sharp. Great for your bait and great for the cutting braid. So with this little tag end, get your lighter and now it don't work. Burning it right away up. When it goes out, I just roll it in my fingers just so it gets nice and neat. That's the, the first part. So on the measure, I hold the loop right the way up against the end so it's on zero. So if I was making smooth end rigs, I'd be doing it to 80. 80 fits a full crab on, absolutely perfect. But today I'm going to top up on my ray rigs. So we're going to go up to 120. So if you measure 120, create a little loop and then poke it through there, pull it down. So I find, get it onto 11 when that knot is still open. And then when you close it down, it's gonna land on 12 centimeter, 120 millimeters. So again, get your puller. Get it nice and tight. So we've pulled it tight, get your, your scissors, super, super sharp scissors. I can't recommend these enough. So again, just burning the edges off. That is my Ray dongle. Here, I've pushed the hook through making sure it's equal on both sides and the knot is on top of the hook. And then we have the dongle loop, which goes on the imp and sits like that with your bait obviously sat on the, on the braid, ready for casting. So now you know how to make them, I recommend keeping a good stock of them. So if you noticed, I've got three different colors. I've got dark green, black, red. 
the reason I've got three different colours is different sizes for different size baits for different fish. So we got the heavy duty one, we got the ray ones, we got the shorter ones for the smooth downs. You can use them for codling with a crab and squid wrap. So keeping a good stock of dongles also means keeping a good stock of rigs. So these are just my ray rigs. We got uh, a couple with hooks already tied, but keeping a large stock of my long pulleys. These haven't got the hooks on yet, so this is the rig what I take. Obviously it's smaller, fits in your box nicer, saves you rummaging around. So this is the one that goes out with me. Throw it around. Got the ray rigs, so I've written six foot ray rigs. So that's the one that goes out with me. This is my stock. So I've made the pulley already. So all I need to do now is tie on the hook. So I might be going after small eyed rays and spot eyed rays, I use a smaller hook. Going after the blondes, use a bigger hook. So good stock of ray rigs, which is the main fishing in the Bristol Channel. So as some of you, some of you know, I do uh, uh, quite a lot of competitions. Uh, not so many at the moment. Been off it a little bit, but here's one for the shore league. That's a mixture of scratching rigs, conger eel rigs, ray rigs, and just a, a big mesk of, of everything in that one, just to cover all all the basics. So again, dogfish rigs as a match angler, you gonna need loads of them. So as a three up clip down, aiming for dogfish, which some of you are gonna absolutely squeam at. Smooth downs, this is going very low. Done a lot of hounding in the summer, rough ground again. So uh, yeah, that's the hound rigs, keeping on top of them. Conga rigs, four foot dongle rigs, which I use on rough ground. Soon, eh, end of the month, I'm going to Fortaventura. So this has got some heavy, heavy duty pulley rigs, wire traces, 200 pound mono, as well as some scratching rigs to go and catch some fresh bait. So I advise whatever fishing you wanna do, stockpile on your rigs, cause finish work early one day or the wife is out with the kids and you got a free day on the weekend, just grab your rigs, grab your rods, get your bait in the freeze, from the freezer and away you go. So as you can see, the cameraman is uh, just having a nap. It's, uh, it's hard work for him uh, being cameraman for me. <laughs> so just wanted to talk about what I take in my box, how I lay it out, and the the baiting tools that I use, the disgorger, reels, headlights, just cover all the basics that I take with me every single time. So, first off, I always keep my reels in the neoprene case. One, I'm a tackle tart, and I hate scratches on my stuff, and also, I've mentioned in a video before, I number my reels. You can see on the, the side tensioner, you got a number five. I remember using this reel on rough ground, and as you can see, lost quite a bit of line. So I know number five needs to get changed. So if even if I didn't lose a line and it was scagged up, there was a problem with a shock leader knot or the, the shock leader was rubbed against rocks, I know number five, I need to change the line, I need to change the shock leader, etc. But what I also recommend is when you get home, take them out of these neoprene cases. As long as you know, salt water corrodes pretty much everything. So as you can see on the handle here, that's where I've left it too long and I haven't rinsed it off. I'm not saying go on and uh, dunk them under water, but wet cloth, give them a little wipe over and it'll keep your reels looking pretty. And if you ever wanna resell them in the future, you'll get a better price if they're looking mint. So yeah, that's reel number five that uh, needs new line on. Also, another little handy tip is these quick links. These quick links are great because when you wind in your old bait or, or fish, you can have a rig already baited up and instead of sat there 
doing a fresh bait you can just grab your next one go cast out straight away the more time you're in the water the more chance you've got of catching fish also what's nice about these clips is they sit on the foot of the reel quite well they sit there and when it's sat in the neoprene case you haven't got the clip rubbing on your reel making it you know chipping away at the paint and it's not getting stuck in the cage so nice little tip just a grab go and also it's not going to go underneath the line and cause an issue whilst you're on the beach there's my reels depending on where i'm fishing if i'm fishing clean ground i'll take three to four reels uh, and if i'm in a match that's fishing rough ground i could possibly take eight or nine reels with me just so i'm not sat on the beach tying leader but also run on about leader i'll still carry a load of 80 pound leader so if i'm stuck on the beach for inside a bird's nest or just lost an end with through, through rough ground uh, or your your other rods you wind in and you mess up your line you can tie on a, another shock leader on the beach that's always handy bait elastic depending on what i'm fishing for and what baits i'm using we've got the fine we got the medium and we got the heavy duty heavy duty whole joeys big big baits for congas taupe anything like that just needs to hold that big bait on medium is my general ray smooth on fishing and then when using really small delicate baits bit of black lug just whip it on bit of bluey next to it mackerel whatever just something a bit more delicate we're just going to put a bit of fine elastic on I don't always take all three. I'll choose which one I'm taking depending on what fishing I'm doing. Leads. So I generally use a six ounce lead for most of my fishing. I can sometimes go to a seven when the weather's a bit rough and you need to punch through the wind and take out bigger baits. Um, I also have eight ounce leads for really really fast running tide big big baits that uh, just need to pin it down in that tide sunny weather i usually take my sunglasses with me there's nothing worse trying to look up at your rod and you're squinting and you can't see your, the rod tip headlights so i see some people they spend hundreds of pounds on their rod a couple hundred quid on their reel but then they go and skimp on a headlight Personally, I'd rather it the other way around. I'd rather be safe on the beach, clambering over the rocks. I want something that lasts a long time. I want something that's bright enough to get me out of sticky situations. But these LED lenses, LED lenses have been absolutely brilliant. Um, I believe the Fenix ones are really good and the Petzels are really good. But uh, this is my headlight of choice. I also take a little bit box spear elastic, spear hooks, clips, fast links for the end of your shock leader, swivels, you never know, you, you, you might just need it. I generally use circle hooks, but I've got a couple of J's in there just in case something ain't going right. So, covering the basics. Also, always have these, they're, they're really handy. When tying knots, and sometimes your your the wires on the on the leads they're not uh, not straight or they need to be bent in more. It's always handy having that. Always handy having a bit of tape. Uh, I remember on West Abathor, uh, Nick Wilson he fell on his rod stand, snapped it, and up finding uh, a stick I think it was put it in, taped it up, and he managed to carry on fishing until he got home towards a new rod stand always carry a set of digital scales with me these are these are the sports scale I don't even sure who makes them but uh, a good set of scales always good rotten bottom line always take it with me even if uh, if I'm going somewhere clean ground it's not much to take with you just in case 
you don't end up on the the part of the venue that you want to be on and there might be people there that uh, means you have to fish a different part of the beach always have that with you with the rotten bottom clips in the little bits tray these cedra bait scissors are the best bait scissors super super sharp they're light and they seem to just last forever uh, great for cutting the braid for the dongles they're, they're, they're just a great all-round scissor always take them with me in fact I always take two maybe sometimes three sets of scissors because I leave them in a little tray in the box one in my cooler box one in the in the in the side tray I only use one side tray because I got that with my bits in I usually have my cooler box next to me so I can work like a little workstation bait knife this is a hard stiff blade this is for cutting frozen baits like a joey mackerel squid or whatever you know it's a bit tough you don't want a flexi knife you just want to press down get through it knife always take the disgorger with me that is a must you have to invest in one of these these are great there's less damage to the fish when you're trying to stick a pair of pliers in its mouth or it's just grab the line hook upside down and they just drop off with ease so a lot of people of you uh, a lot of people have asked me about where did i get this it's my dongle puller gary parsons has made this for me and he's made it for lots of other people uh, he's selling them in uh, a few tackle shops so you can push that through your bait there's a little groove there the dongle sits in there on the loop you can put it through and then you can whip around it so swivels are my choice i've recently just gone on to the cedra x3 the crane swivel they're 310 pound test on a size 2 swivel which is absolutely insane uh, some of you are probably thinking what's the point when you're only using 80 or 100 pound um, rig body but if you re keep reusing your swivels obviously the stronger ones are going to last longer they're much better so that's those bits little baiting tools so when i'm using the dongle with crab baits or worm baits and I'm whipping them onto the dongle the dongle can sit on the little bend by there you can pull it tight you can whip round and get it all neat and tidy scratching with little soft baits little bits of bluey little bits of anchovy cut it to size stick it in bait elastic around and then you can feed your hook through it or you can lay the, the hook in it and whip around again I love this little thing so recently a couple of friends of mine have showed me it they use it on squid mainly but you can use it on fish baits as well just when it's a bit big a bit tough um, instead of throwing the squid head away which has got loads of ink and lots of scent in that you can lay get the body of the squid cut it to the shape and size you want it get the guts, get the head, even get a bluey head, any discarded bait that you'd normally throw away, lay it on top, little chopping border on top of your cool box, smash it up and you can whip it onto your bait, just creating that extra scent and not wasting any of your bait at all. So these are the things that I always, always take with me. Something else that people, I think, really overlook is general maintenance on your rod stand. There's nothing worse if you just have a massive track and then you get there these unscrew turn and then you can get obviously your rods on there but traveling it's ideal to have them up flat out the way so with salt sand and just general moisture on metal isn't always a great idea so a little bit of spray of WD-40 on the moving parts don't forget the joints you don't get on the beach it's just a hassle trying to fight with your rod stand just to try and get it set up so all the joints all the moving parts just give a little spray not every single time just once every other month or whatever uh, depending on how often you're going out but yeah just to keep things going smooth and don't overlook it so just to finish off 
just checking over your rods every so often. Again, not every single time you go out, but uh, it's good to just check it, especially if you've been in bad weather, fishing on sand, and just general salt buildup. So again, once every other month, check your spigots, the male end and the female end, making sure you haven't got any salt buildup, any sand, or any just grit or whatever, because you can get them stuck, stuck together for that reason. So make sure they're looped up and check the eyes, make sure there's no little cracks in them. And you can also get weeds and bits stuck on, on the eyes that can cause a bit of friction. But uh, just gently keep them clean, stop any browning and any problems on the beach. Look after your spigots. So uh, also, just whilst you're at it, a little bit of WD-40 on your coasters or your real seats where they're screwed on and wind them down tight. On this rod, I have got a coaster. So a little spray on that just to make sure it's moving, it's not rusted, and you're not gonna have any issues on the beach. So I hope these little tips have helped just to stop any stress on the beach making sure you've got all the right tackle, all the right rigs, your reels are looked after, your rods are looked after, rod stands, all of it. There's nothing worse when you're getting problem after problem. You just want to go on the beach. You want it to be a nice relaxing session. So just sort the issues at home and uh, on the beach should be fine.